Hello, today we're going to be going over to Shadow Cruiser 2023 model 277 BHS and we are going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. With the tongue jack you got this switch right here it's going to be so you have your light so if you have to hook up at night you can kind of see. The other one here so that you're able to extend and retract the trailer. This is when you're going to get on and off but this is how you level from front to back. We do like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle that you're level from side to side first. Uh, you can use a carpenter's level right inside the doorway, that's what you, which is recommended, or you can buy stick-on levels you can put on the coach. But you want to make sure you're level from side to side first. You may have to put some blocks down to elevate one side. We'll use that tow vehicle to roll onto those. It makes it a lot easier. Then unhook and level front to back using this guy. Once you're level from front to back and side to side, then you'll lower your stabilizer jacks. Nice thing is these guys are motorized and are operated with a switch. You got a switch here in the front and a switch in the rear for the rear stabilizers and the front stabilizers to extend and retract those. You're just going to wait till they get basically on the ground. You'll hear the change of the sound of the motor and they want to stop. You do have cap lights here. These guys are uh, controlled from the inside on the control panel. I'll show you that when we step inside. Next, you're going to have your propane tank area. You got two 20 pound tanks that have both been filled, minus what we use to test the propane system with. This guy back here is going to be your regulator. Basically, this tells you one, what tank you're using, and two, it'll tell you when your tank is empty. Basically, this guy will read green when it's sensing propane flow, and it will turn red when the tank is empty. This guy is designed to where usually you can have these both on. Once the one tank is empty, it will start pulling from the other tank. It does also set up where if you go like this and you have both tanks on, it'll pull from the tanks at the same time. We usually always recommend and have one tank on at a time. That way you know when one of the tanks is empty. Next, back behind that is where our battery is located. 24 series, deep cycle marine RV style battery. As we come around over to the side here. Basically, you got the pastor storage compartment. You do have the motion sensor light here. The one hash mark on the switch down here, the light will continuously stay on. The two hash mark will cause it to be a motion sensor so as soon as you go open the door the light will automatically pop on for you they do provide this guy here this is an aftermarket tire and monitoring system hookup there is a storage there i'll show you that once we get to the other side because that's where our handle is to lift and do all that underneath here is going to be where your gray tank is located for just your kitchen sink Alright, then as we come around here towards the back side, you're going to have a couple different hookups here. One, you're going to have your satellite and cable. So if you've got a dome or a satellite dish, things like that, it'll hook up to this side here. If you're at a campground that provides cable for you, you're going to hook up to this side here. You do have to make sure you turn off the TV antenna booster for that signal to come through, and I'll show you where that's located when we have stepped inside. Next, we've got the city water hookup. With this, it is recommended you have a pressure regulator on the water spigot. From there, your options have an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. Hook up to this guy, be ready to use the cold side right away. You do have to wait for the hot water heater to fill for there to be the hot for water to come out on the hot side. Down below is going to be where your black tank flush is. Pretty much as a sprayer inside the black tank sprays around and gets the nastiness out. When you go to use this guy, I do always like to recommend that you have a black hose for this, black tank, black hose, it helps keep it simple. But I always do try to say use a pressure regulator on this as well. Uh, there is a plastic check valve on the back side of this, too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve. But when you go to hook up to this, before you turn the water on, that is where you should have your sewer hose hooked up. It does not come with the coach. But your valve down here, your black handle valve, needs to be in that open position right there like it is right now. Start dumping the black tank and then turn the water on to start flushing the tank. Do not turn this water on if that valve is closed. If it's already a full tank and you start adding water to it, well that water is going to come out of one or two places, either the toilet or the vent stack on the roof. Both situations are going to be bad and nasty. Once you are done doing the black tank, doing your flush, you see the water is coming out pretty clean from the clear elbow that comes with the sewer hose. You're gonna turn the water off at the spigot and unhook your hose from there first. All right, the reason why is because on the back side of this is a, a hose that goes to that check valve, but you don't know how long that hose is. But that water has to have pressure to go through that check valve, so that water's gotta drain out. 
So I always recommend unhook it from the spigot first, that way that water can drain out of the hose. Then you would close off your black, because basically we, or we done did the black. And then, and then you would open your gray to drain your gray tank. Sorry, I forgot to give them guys a memo about we're doing a video. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Uh, in your bumper here, you're able to store that sewer hose that, that you would have to purchase. It is an aftermarket purchase. The sewer hose and the clear oboe I was talking about will not fit in here. I recommend getting an ice cream container like a gallon jug. We can have a good time or a depressing time eating that ice cream. But then from there, you can put that container or that elbow in that container, and then that way it's secured and it won't get nothing nasty rolling around potentially. You got your spare tire here. It is pre-wired for an observational backup camera. And you've also got the aftermarket on-the-go ladder mount. Pretty much it's a telescope ladder that you can purchase. It hooks onto that, and that's designed so you can get on your roof and inspect the roof. It is recommended you should have the roof looked at every 90 to 120 days just to make sure no sealant hasn't softened up as you're going down the road on the hot summer days and air bubbles occurring. Or over time, that sealant will start to dry out and start cracking. When that happens, you wanna clean that lap sealant and put new over that. You can usually do that a couple of times, but then you have to try to peel that all off and put a fresh sealant down. Next, we're gonna have the water heater. It is gas and electric option. Those will both be controlled from the inside. Uh, down here is going to be your drain cap. Basically, when you're done using the camper, you should always get all the water out of the camper. So basically, you want to get the water out of your water heater, too. What you're going to do is open this to relieve the pressure and then take this cap off. This is a 1 and 1 16th socket. All right, this will come around to the side here. Here's our other switch here for the rear stabilizer jacks. You do have a quick connect spray port out here as well. You got your outside mini fridge. I always forget what side it opens on. And you do have your temperature settings here. Six being the highest. Usually I like to try to keep it right around in the middle between three and a half and four. You usually have a pretty good sustainable temperature. You do have a small little freezer up top. You've got cabin space here. There's where our quick connect hose is. Next, we're gonna have our little kitchen area here, basically with the griddle. With the griddle, you got your hose, it's quick connected here, connected, or it's already connected here. On the bottom is a quick connected fitting. So with this guy, you're gonna have an on and off valve up here at the top. Right now that's in that off position. So you're able to pull that out or put this guy in if you need to. Always make sure that once you get it in, try to give it a snug or a, a pull to make sure that it's in there kind of tight. And then you just turn that valve on, and then from there, you're ready to light the grill. When you go to light your grill, basically this guy's got the spot igniter in it. And usually you'll have to do this a couple of times for that flame to light. Once that flame lights, you can set your griddle on top. I do always recommend that you do get the griddle, or you season your griddle first. And to do so, I, my best recommendation is going on YouTube and look up how to season a Blackstone because basically it's going to be the same kind of type and just season it. Uh, they may have instructions on seasoning it inside the owner's manual as well. Uh, that guy should be located inside the manual packet inside. But please don't quote me on that because sometimes they don't like to put the manuals in here all, every time. Nice thing is you do have uh, a key to light camper. So basically the one key operates all your compartment door locks, your entry door locks, and all that. <clears throat> For your doors, the door handle lock, you will turn the key to the right, it locks the door handle. And then you're able to pull that key out. For the deadbolt, you have to turn the key to the left. You are also unable to pull that key out. That shows you you lock the deadbolt. You gotta go back straight up and down to be able to pull that key out. If you turn it to the right, thinking you locked your deadbolt, but you're able to pull that key out, it shows you did not lock your deadbolt. And we'll come back to these steps here in just a minute and talk a little bit about those. Next, we're gonna have our tires. Our tires, you always wanna make sure the lug nuts are torqued to 100 foot-pounds 
and you guys have what we like to call the over aggressive sticker this is recommended that you check your lug nuts at 10 25 and 50 <laughs> miles uh, it's a little aggressive uh, we always do like to recommend you should check them at 50 100 and 200 miles uh, I also like to say a lot of times when you leave a campground first place we're stopping is the gas station to refuel well, while you're refueling, you can check the lug nuts on the tires. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. And a lot of times during our trips, we may have to stop more than once to fuel up. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and check them while you're refueling. Uh, you also do want to keep the tires topped off to the max PSI level. I believe these guys are 65 PSI. Can we confirm that with you? Yes, they are 65 PSI. You see, there's also green caps on these guys, so it shows me that these guys have been filled with nitrogen. Uh, nice thing about nitrogen is they don't get as hot. They, they, it doesn't heat up as fast. The tires don't. Uh, they also say if you run over something, you ain't going to lose the air as quickly. You're still going to lose air when you run over something. It's just that's going to happen. Um, but the nitrogen is actually a nice little plus to have. You can put air over the top of these. That's not going to hurt nothing. The only thing is if you ever decide that you are going to go ahead and top them back off with nitrogen, and if you did put air in them, wherever you go to find a station that does nitrogen, you have to let them know that you did put air in those tires so that they can be purged. You, Because the object is to try to get as much of that air out as possible, but there's usually a little bit of air that's still in there. All right, next, you got your outside TV hookup and a 110. This guy here is where you're going to fill the fresh water tank, pretty much portable water. So if the campsite didn't have water provided for you, you'd have to fill this guy up before you get there. Pretty much gravity fed, just stick the hose in and let it fill. Do you want to read the monitor panel inside for when it does say full, you want to shut that water off so you ain't overfilling the tank. Overfilling, uh, over time, filling that tank numerous times where it starts shooting water back out at you. You cause damage to both the tank also can cause damage to the outside or the inside where the hose is connected on the back side of this. To drain your fresh water tank is going to be located down below here. Pretty much you're going to have this knob. Pretty much turn it up, you're going to start draining the fresh water tank. As you see we had some water in there already. While I'm also down here I'm going to go ahead and show you these guys right here. These are your low point drains. Basically cold uh, blue for cold, red for hot. Uh, usually you'll use these guys when you're winterizing and de-winterizing your coach. I also recommend, like to recommend that you use them when you're done camping. Uh, generally you want to try to get all the water out of the camper uh, so that way it won't become t potentially stagnant or bad. And like well water usually is known to go bad faster because of the minerals that's in it. Uh, basically though you open up these valves here, uh, open up a faucet, in the coach as you drive home the air is going to blow that water out of the lines so that way it won't become potentially stagnant or bad when that happens you got to sanitize your lines and basically to do that you're going to put bleach in here usually fill this guy up to about two-thirds and then you're going to run that water through the coach so you smell bleach coming out of all your lines then you got to let it sit for a couple of hours and then you're going to flush the system basically you gotta flush out the tank a couple times if you flush out the water lines i always recommend just hooking up to the city water and just run that water through it cleans out the lines a lot quicker but you will have to do you will have to flush the tank a couple of times if you ain't really drinking the water i wouldn't necessarily stress too much about having to completely rinse that out anyways because it's just going to help clean things also next you got your vent for the stove up top here you do have to make sure that inside piece is open for the vent to be properly or for the fan to be working properly next we're going to have our furnace area for the intake and the exhaust it does say right here, don't want to block these openings. Uh, but we do like to recommend getting little mud dauber nest, nest screens. Uh, basically, they look like eyeballs that go right over the covers of these. It helps keep mud daubers and wasps out there from creating nests that can create issues from it not wanting to properly operate. Then we got our door here to the bedroom. And then inside here is going to be the other side of your store, past your storage department. Once again, watch the sensor light. We do have our manual crank tools here, basically for your tongue jack. This will be for your stabilizers if something happens to these motors. And then this one here so you can bring your slide room in. I'll show you where this is at located in just a moment. And then you got the storage up here. There's a magnet that will grab this door. And this guy will actually slide up 
so you can pack it. You are usually able to kind of maneuver where you can pull it out a little further. You just got to be careful when you start putting stuff in there. And the guy will just slide right on in. Oh, I'm sorry, right here. You do have a solar charge controller. Basically, it just monitors the battery. And once the uh, battery gets to a certain point and needs a charge, if it's not plugged in, this, it'll allow the solar to come through and charge those batteries for you. These steps here are real nice and simple. These guys here just basically fold and fold and go right in. All right, as we come back here towards the front door here, or main entrance door, but rear door. So with these steps, you always want to make sure these guys are going to be as flat with the threshold as possible. Okay, sometimes there might be a small little elevation. That's not going to hurt nothing. Too much of an elevation though will cause damage to both the screen door and the entry door if you are not careful. You do always have to make sure this door is open all the way whenever you go to bring these guys up or down. But basically these guys just lock right in. These guys here so you can able to adjust the feet. Before I bring this back down. Right here is, is going to be where you would stick the tool through for the manual crank to bring your slide room in. All right, as we step inside, your fire extinguisher is going to be located right here on the left side of your entry door. You are going to have your closet or pantry little area, however you want to use it. They do give you a 110 outlet in here uh, for whatever you might need it for. And then coat rack. Maybe for an internet box, maybe. Something along those lines, perhaps. Rechargeable next, vacuum. Rechargeable vacuum. Good, good idea. Uh, next, we're going to have our thermostat here. This model here is what I like to call a lot of button pushing. First push the space bar, it's going to light up the screen. Then from there, you got fan low and fan high. That's just going to be just the fan on the air conditioner. <clears throat> Next, you're going to have cool high and cool low. And these two settings here, the air conditioner will just continuously run and will not shut off to a desired set temperature. It's the next two settings here where you got cool low auto and cool high auto. The air conditioner will automatically shut off to your desired set temperature. Like right now, we're looking to try to get 36 degrees in here. Holy cow. I ain't trying to live like an Eskimo. <laughs> we'll go ahead and turn this guy back up here to probably about 69, 70 degrees. And then your last option for this guy would be the heat. And then once again, set your desired set temperature for that. And then your last position is off. All right. Next, as we come around here, we'll talk about the TV and our radio and all that here in just a minute. We're going to come down here to where our control, uh, basically our control panel is located. So with the control panel here, it will show you your tank, tank, tank statuses, uh, including your battery, and then your fresh tank, black, gray, and auxiliary. Next, you're going to have for the water pump, this is for the gas side for your electric or for the water heater and then the electric side for the water heater then you got your inside cabin lights our cap lights our awning lights and then you got auxiliary lights which those are that's usually um the lights underneath the steps then we got a slide room to bring it in and out and then our awning to an extend and retract it is a little bit breezy today so i don't want to open up the awning but when you have the awning all the way open, there is a basically a pitch arm where you can grab and pull it down and it will create a pitch on the awning. That is meant to be as a shade protectant and it is recommended when the camper is being unattended, the awning should be brought in. And then our last guy here is gonna be our battery disconnect. Pretty much when we're storing the camper, you're just gonna push this guy in so nothing inside the coach would potentially drain your battery. Uh, a lot of times the fridge gets left on and that will drain your battery. All right, next we got, we're going to go ahead and move up here to the radio. So you have two speaker zones, zone one and zone two. 
zone one is your inside speaker. Those are your outside speakers, if you can hear those. You can have either one of them on or both of them on. This guy is also your DVD player. It does not play Blu-rays. Uh, I do like to recommend, though, that if you guys are watching a movie, to make sure that you do have speaker zone turned off. So that way people outside is not listening to the video you, that you may be watching. Especially if you're trying to spice up the night and you put a risque movie in there, you don't really need the other people hearing that. You may get some people knocking on your door, hey, my kids are hearing some funny noises, or you might get some people saying, hey, you need some extra hands. There are some weird people out there, okay? Uh, so just be, be mindful that if you are watching a movie, make sure speaker zone B or 2, 2 is turned off. Press and hold the power button to turn it off. A lot of times if you just press it, it will just mute it. And this is going to be your remote for him. Next, we've got our TV here. Go ahead and turn this guy on. You pull the strap down, it'll actually release the TV. So you can turn it. No, I have not. So generally, anytime you get to a new area, you will have to scan for channels. You may not pick up St. Louis channels in Florida or New Mexico or wherever you may be. Uh, to basically do so, you're going to pull up your menu right here. I normally just push my arrow key back one time. It'll take me to channels. Go down from here. You can choose air or cable. And if you're going to choose the cable, you got to make sure you turn this booster off. So for the cable signal feed to come through, you have to turn this off just by pushing that button. And it even tells you right here, for TV, you want it on. For cable, you want it off. And then from there, you would change it to cable, go down to auto scan. If you're looking to scan for regular channels, I waited too long, choose air, go down to auto scan, and then start the scan. You do got some cabinets you space down below. Next, we're going to have our fridge area here. Basically, with this guy, you got your power on and off on this end. You got to press and hold it to turn it off. And then to turn it on. From there, you can choose whether the freezer or the fridge. So right now, that blue dot saying we're on the fridge. Uh, so then we can choose our temperature setting for the fridge. Usually with this guy, three and four is pretty good. In the summertime, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and have it on five just because it's a lot hotter. And then your freezer, turn that guy all the way up. Oh, wait, did I get that backwards? I might have had that backwards. Nope, I think you got it because look at the picture. Freezer, fridge. Okay, so I, did, I actually did have that backwards. So this should have been the freezer here, and then that's the fridge. And then you got the light. So then the moonlight here, this is basically... For this, it say at nighttime, it's usually not as warm, uh, so it's not gonna pull as much power. So basically in a nighttime mode, it's, it's doing an energy conserving. It's been on for a few hours. It's actually been, it's actually pretty good and cold. Actually, I think no, he's had this on since yesterday. And it's pretty good and cold. Down below that's where our fuse panel box is located. Basically inside here, anything that operates off sure power, so you have to be plugged in for it to work, is all going to be on your breakers, and they do have everything labeled for you for what they are. Everything that runs off your battery is going to be on the fuses, and once again, it's labeled for everything. Slide rooms, lights, things along that nature. Uh, the fridge, stuff like that. Ooh. Got the microwave, pretty self-explanatory. I always do like to say just set the timer on this. You guys go out, you come back, you see the timer wasn't set. It shows you there was a power failure at the campsite. You want to look and see if it came from the campground itself or from the electric company. Uh, larger campsites can be known to have power surges. Uh, power surges can damage a camper if you're not careful. Next, you got your hood range here where we've already got the light on, your fan. Whenever you are going to use the stove, you do have to have this fan on and going. This is not a glass stove top. This does have to be open whenever you go to cook. 
It just folds and folds. And there you turn it to the flame icon and churn. It's lit because we already got propane cycling through. Uh, usually when you first turn, turn the tank on, it might have to you might have to actually click it a couple of times for it to actually get light lit. And you see that lit up showing that that was turned on. That's a nice little feature there. Uh, this guy here on the far side is going to be for the oven. Once again, you're going to have the icon for the flame. But you got to keep this pressed and held in while you spark ignite. Generally, if you usually hold this at the right angle, you're able to see the spark and you can see when it's lit. Once it's lit, you keep this held in for usually 7 to 10 seconds or so. And then from there, you should be able to go ahead and set your temperature and it's lit. This guy here is just so you got some ambiance lights. Ooh, pretty. And then two is going to be the ambiance lights, but the light for the oven. All right, real quick, I'm going to backtrack here. I forgot to show you just a little switch here on the side. This guy here is just going to be your pretty little ambiance lights for around your entertainment area. Ooh, pretty. You got plenty of drawer space here as well. Cabinet space underneath the sink. You got your GFCI outlet here. So generally, if you go see that some outlets in the coach are not working come make sure this guy has not been tripped you do also have a outlet up here as well another light you can turn this on and off by hand same with these guys this one right here this one here is the this guy here contains most of the manuals inside the coach uh if there's not a manual in the coach most of them have went um paperless so they're more online manuals anymore and if that's the case you just kind of look up your the product name like Greystone or Furion or that's a Norcold. Kind of look up that information and there. Usually you can try to get a manual for those items. Next we're going to have the bedroom area here. Basically you got this guy here. There's a little twist lock on the side. Twist, unlock and then you got your sliding door for the bedroom. You do also got three drawers on this side over here. Put stuff on the way so you can see. Each side does come with its own little closet area. You got storage up above as well. And then each side, I do believe, has the 110 outlets. Mm -hmm. And then this guy here is a pretty nifty little thing here. You get some storage under your bed, but to, to use it, you have to slide it over. And this is also where your, one of your vents for your furnace is located as well. Uh, you can lock this into place. There is a lock underneath here, so it can be locked into place. Like I was saying, your little small closet area. Also gives you extra room for making the bed, which extra is kind of cool. Extra room for making the bed. Be able to reach your thermostat right here for just the bedroom air conditioner. That's it. Uh, these lights here actually have USB hookups, so you can plug in to be able to charge your phone as well. These do. You have to turn on and off by hand. Uh, your other door does come with a peephole, so you can see all see the people, weirdos are trying to stare <laughs> in at you. All the other people lock, knocking on your door. This guy here is your fire exit window, so you are unable to make your way to the door. Uh, you are able to get out. Basically, it's on a hinge, so this whole door or window will fling open. They do recommend this is here, so you can try to pull the screen out. Uh, if there's a fire, I'd recommend just putting your feet through the window to get out. I ain't worried about having to replace a screen. Just wouldn't want to hear people got injured. All right, as we move forward, we got our dinette area. For your light up above, it's in the center. It's touch sensitive. Uh, your dinette does fold into a bed as well. Basically, the tabletop lifts up. The legs get pulled out and they can lay on the ground right there and then the table will sit right here on these guys on each side and then you use your back cushion pieces to fill it in for the bed next time it works simple you got another usb hook up here for charging your phones uh storage up above here uh this guy here yep. breaks down into a bed as well legs out, pull this guy forward, this 
here will fold down and then you put your cushions there on the back side to fill in that void in the back. Nice and simple. It ain't like the 1980s, 90s style hideaway beds where they weigh like 3,000 pounds. And they're super hard to unfold. Super hard to unfold. Plenty of springs to pinch your hands. I never dealt with those in my life, I promise. All right. Next, we're gonna move here into the bathroom. Basically in the bathroom, you're gonna have your switch for your light. You got your sink and medicine cabinet. Up above is going to be your vent fan. Basically, you just open this guy up, turn it on. Then we're going to have our shower area here. Basically, it closes hot and cold. You've got the shower end piece here. Basically, this is so you can shut the water off. So you can try to get the most out of your hot water because it is only a six gallon water heater. Average American uses 38 gallons of just hot water when they take a shower, so you're already fighting a losing battle. By reducing that flow of water, you're able to get the most out of your hot water. Next, we're going to have the toilet. <clears throat> With the toilet, you always you lightly press on the pedestal, add some water so you can do your business. All the way down is going to flush. You always do want to try to make sure that there's some water that's always left in the bowl, so that way that seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle because then it, it can, a lot of smells come through if it, the tank is not properly taken care of. With that being said, whenever you go to use your tank, before you first use it, you want to make sure that you put a chemical into the tank and at least a gallon of water. You can either use the liquid, and with the liquid, all you would do is just go one, two, or you can buy a, a two ounce shot glass to put in here. Two ounces treats up to a 40 gallon tank. If you're using the pouches, I do always recommend, fill the bowl at least a quarter of the way full of water and put that Put that pouch in there. Make sure you see that pouch dissolve. I have seen in many times where a pouch is not dissolved. It just comes out completely. It's not doing its job at all. And next we got our bunk area here. Upper and lower. Each side does, each one has their own light. Once again with the USB hookups. The max weight on these guys are 275 pounds. And you do get a little storage down below here as well. And then from there, we have basically made our way back to the door. Hopefully this video is knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.